Good morning, how are you? <laughs> I am doing just fantastic. I'm just going walking for a while. Just walking, yes sir. Huh? Oh, about what? Oh, okay. Thank you. And here I am, I am in of course, the Philippines, Davao City, and I am beginning my message today simply because God told me to walk as I deliver the message today. I was in prayer this morning, and he actually spoke the message. Today is a part of the series called Slipping into Darkness. And I've already done four parts of this series dealing with varying areas that we slip into darkness as we follow the ways of the world instead of the ways of God. And I actually looked up the seven major areas that we slip into darkness according to Google, not according to God or to the Bible. These are, this is what Google said of the seven major areas that we slip into darkness with. And that's what I'm going to be dealing with today. And it's the level simply called the common everyday things of life. And I am going to use the name of Jesus literally to talk to you about how to deal with the common everyday things of life. Now, the name of Jesus is the most powerful name on the face of the earth. Yet today, I am going to use an acronym. And as I was in prayer this morning, God simply spoke the words to the name of Jesus to use for today's message. And that's what I'm going to do. So many of you right now, you struggle with just day-to-day -day stuff and things of the mundane, ordinary, but you deal with this stuff day by day. It's one thing after another, and you have to deal with it. Now, I'm, of course, walking here in, uh, along the street in the Philippines. I just put my clothes in the laundry to be washed and dried and folded. Cost 200 pesos. 200 pesos is about four dollars. It's roughly uh, 55 pesos per dollar. Really, really inexpensive to live here. The people are super nice. But I want to just talk to you about the common everyday stuff of life and how to use the name of Jesus to deal with that. Now, you've not heard it done this way before, I don't think. But that's what I'm going to talk to you about. And as you can see, he told me to walk and talk. And I am along the street. You can see it's busy, a lot of noise, but uh, you can hear me. Number one, when you're dealing with so much stuff in life, and I want you to remember these five things from the name of Jesus. Number one, just relax. Just relax. When we, we deal with so much stuff and we get so stressed out, so anxious, so worried, just relax. I want you to say those two words. Just relax. Go ahead and say it. Just relax. So much stuff, and, and it just gets to us. It hurts us. It makes us mad. It makes us upset. And because it does that, it takes our peace, and it takes our joy. Just relax. The word just relax. It's very simple, very easy to do. So if you do this, you find that You'll calm down, you will relax, you will get peace in your life. Simply by just relaxing and just saying the words to yourself. The first letter, J, in the name of Jesus, you find brings you peace. Just relax. One day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. And as they were sailing, he fell asleep.
Where is your faith? The letter E. Educate yourself. When you have proper knowledge about things, it helps you to put stuff in proper perspective. I'll give you a good example. I go to Florida quite a bit. I actually go to the dentist there in Florida. And as I was talking with someone recently, there is now a CDC alert about malaria in Florida. And there are two states the CDC has issued an alert on. That's Florida and Texas, because they have what's called locally transmitted malaria in Florida and Texas right now. So it's been all over the news about malaria in Texas and Florida. And I was talking to people about it. I said, well, first of all, let me educate myself about what is really going on. Let me see the real number of cases and the situation of malaria in Florida. So I looked it up. Florida has 22 million people. 22 million. You know how many cases of locally transmitted malaria are in Florida right now that the CDC has issued this malaria warning that has everybody in the whole state and anybody planning on traveling to Florida worried? Five. That's right. Five out of 22 million folks, there are five cases of malaria. Now, the alert is issued on Florida and Texas. Do you know how many cases of locally transmitted malaria exist in the state of Texas? And Texas, Texas is way bigger than Florida. Do you know how many cases exist? One. One. There are a total of six cases of locally transmitted malaria in Florida and Texas, and the CDC has issued an alert that has people worried all over Texas and Florida. Educate yourself. And when you educate yourself, you'll find that it's really not as bad when you really know the truth, when you really know the facts, the truth will set you free. Educate yourself. And even with those six people who have malaria, the chances are they're not going to die. They're going to get sick, but they won't die. And when you look at how many people die every day from cardiovascular disease, roughly 800,000 people a year die in America from cardiovascular disease, that means you'll have six people who will die every five minutes from cardiovascular disease. But we're worried about malaria and something that is so statistically improbable that it will never happen to the vast, vast majority. So educate yourself and it makes a tremendous difference in how you be able to change and keep a joy and a peace in your spirit. Just relax. Educate yourself. The letter S. Serve. Serve. You'll find in the Bible in Job 42.10. The Bible says that after Job prayed for his friends, God restored his fortune. And then God blessed him after he prayed for his friends. When we stop focusing so much on just us and our stuff and serve, it makes a big difference. Because now we place 
an emphasis on helping someone else. And I, I believe it's why God has given me the command, help somebody every day. So every day I have to find someone in some way or another to help them, whether that's an encouraging word, whether that's in something material, but it takes the focus off of me all of the time. Stop worrying about you so much and serve, help somebody else. After Job prayed for his friends, and you know, Job, Job has, a, has the toughest trial in the Bible. He really did. It's the oldest book of the Bible. It's the first true book of the Bible. It has 42 chapters, and in 42 10, Job is going through all this stuff. He was telling God about all his problems, all of why I wish he'd never been born, all this stuff happening. But God didn't even listen to Job. He didn't turn his situation until Job put his focus on somebody else. Sir, put your focus on somebody else. Do something for somebody else and stop being so self-centered. Sacrifice. Sir, just relax. Educate yourself. And sir. Once there was a little boy who loved his family a lot, and he wanted to help them and care for them, just like Jesus taught. But one little problem made the boy feel kind of blue. I'm so little, the little boy thought. What can I do? His baby sister was fussy, and she was crying all day, and he thought, Maybe I can see if my sister wants to play. He went and got her toy ball, and he helped her roll it around. And soon his baby sister was happy, and she didn't make a sound. The mother said to the boy, You really helped our family today. Thank you for serving your sister and helping her to play. You might think what you did was just a little thing you see, but you really helped me today, and it was a big deal to me. There was also a little girl who loved her family a lot, and she wanted to help them and care for them, just like Jesus taught. But one little problem made the girl feel kind of blue. I'm so little, the little girl thought. What can I do? I'm going to be late for work, father said. This is really bad news. I've looked around everywhere, and I can't find my shoes. The little girl noticed and said to her dad, I think I can help. This morning when I was reading a book, I saw them on the shelf. The father was happy to see those shoes, and he was feeling great. You saved the day, her father said, and now I won't be late. You might think what you did was just a little thing you see, but you really helped me today, and it's a big deal to me. There was another little boy who loved his family a lot, and he wanted to help them and care for them, just like Jesus taught. But one little problem made the boy feel kind of blue. I'm so little, the little boy thought. What can I do? His brother's job that night was to wash all the dishes, but his brother was distracted because he was looking at his fishes. The little boy thought that surprising his brother might be kind of fun. Guess what, the little boy said. The dishes are all done. The brother said to the boy, you really helped me today. And our home is full of love and peace when we treat each other that way. You might think what you did is just a little thing you see, but you really helped me today, and it was a big deal to me. There was another little girl who loved her family a lot, 
and she wanted to help them and care for them, just like Jesus taught. But one little problem made the girl feel kind of blue. I'm so little, the little girl thought. What can I do? Christmas was coming up, and her sister prayed for snow every night. But every morning she would look outside, and there was never a snowflake in sight. The little girl noticed and said to herself, "I know just what to do. I'll make some paper snowflakes and hang them on the window for you." When her sister woke up, she went to the window just like every day. But this time, when she looked outside, she smiled and said, "Hooray! This is better than I imagined." I can't believe my eyes. Then she told her sister, "Thank you for the wonderful surprise." You might think what you did was just a little thing, you see, but you really helped me today, and it's a big deal to me. God gave us families to help us learn and grow, and your family needs you. In case you didn't know, love and serve one another. That's what Jesus taught, and even if we are little, we can still do a lot. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what we're doing and you want to support us, please visit our Patreon page at patreoncom kids. The you in Jesus understand others. We just finished a book in my company called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. One of the best books in the world. Are really helping you to live life other than the Bible, but one of the principles of the seven habits of highly effective people is to seek first to understand, then to be understood. Most of us follow the ways of the world, and we just want people to understand us. Nobody understands how I feel. You just don't understand. When we seek. First, to understand others and what others are going through, it will help us tremendously. So, before you get all upset over somebody, before you cuss them out, bless them out, beat them up, whatever the case may be, ask yourself: How are they viewing this from their perspective? What are they going through? What is their background? What have they dealt with? And you'll often find, as the saying goes, when you walk a mile in another person's shoes, you have a whole different perspective. So understand others. Just relax. Educate yourself. Serve. Understand others. And number five, the S in J E S U S. Systematize. Systematize. Get organized. You'll find that if you really got a whole lot to do, you've got this stuff every single day. Organize yourself. Get your stuff and get it in a system. And you'll find that when you systematize, when you organize, things will go much, much smoother for you. God has me set. So number one, I'm in bed every night by 11. I'm in prayer by 10. I get up at five. He has me with a system. I have a certain number of hours to study every day. I have a specific workout schedule. So he organizes everything. The more organized we get, the easier it becomes for us to handle all of the day-to-day -day routines of life. If you just do things haphazardly, yes,、yeah, don't get out of whack. But if you have a systematized way of handling life. And handling the things of the world, you'll find that it goes a whole lot smoother. Here's some ideas on how to structure your day for maximum productivity, performance, and output. Benny from Facebook recently asked me, "How do you structure your day?" So here's some tips to help you structure your day to be more productive and successful. Number one: 
Every minute spent in planning saves 10 minutes in execution or getting the job done. So the most important thing you can do is plan your day, preferably the night before. Sit down with a piece of paper and write down everything that you have to do the coming day. It should be the last thing you do at the end of the day. Now, if for any reason you don't do this, then the first thing you do in the morning before you check your email, your phone calls, newspapers, first thing you do in the morning is make a list of everything that you have to do that day. Once you have a list, you have a track to run on. Writing down a list clarifies your thinking. Writing down a list forces you to think at a higher level. If you start working from a list, you increase your productivity and output by 25% the first day. All successful people work from lists, and all successful people with regard to their projects work from checklists. A checklist is a list of everything organized in sequence, and you go down the checklist. Now, the second way that you can organize your day is to set priorities on your list before you begin. Don't just rush into it. Look over the list and apply the 80-20 rule. If you have 10 items to do on your list, two will be more valuable than the other eight put together. Sometimes it's the 90-10 rule. If you have 10 items on your list, one will be important, more important than all the others put together. Go down your list and ask yourself this question. If I could only do one thing on this list before I was called out of town for, for a month, what one task would I want to be sure to complete? Now, in my life, I'm called out of town for a week, two weeks, three weeks, sometimes a month, all the time. Last fall, I was out of town and traveling in 15 countries over 36 days. So I have to look at my work list before I go, and I have to get my most important tasks done. So once you identify this task, this leads to the next way to organize your day, is begin immediately on your most important task, and then stay with it until it's complete. All of success in life comes from project completion. It comes from taking jobs, and a project is called a multi-task job. It means there's several little jobs within the larger job. And what you do is you organize your projects by sequence, the checklist, and then you start on your most important project, and then you stay with that project until it's complete. This process is called single handling. It's the most powerful success strategy that you can use in managing your time. You can actually increase your productivity by 50% by simply starting and completing your most important task first thing every day. So if you can do those three things, start with a list, organize the list by priority, and then start on and complete your most important task, you can double and triple your productivity, sometimes almost overnight. Thanks for listening. This is Brian Tracy on Success Talk. Did you like this episode? Make sure to subscribe for the next one and tell a friend about it. For exclusive content on sales training, leadership, business, and personal success, visit me at bryantracy.com. And while you're there, sign up for my newsletter. Until next time, do the things today that will lead to the life that you desire tomorrow. Now, I've walked a while here. This is how God has, and I'm, maybe some of you seeing some stuff out here, looking at all these people that are actually in line here. These cars are going to the dock to take the barge across to some islands here in the Philippines. But those five things, using the name of Jesus, just relax, educate yourself, serve, understand others, and systematize. Real simple. And if you just start with that first one, if you don't remember the other four, just remember that first one in the name of Jesus. Just relax. Just relax. I can guarantee you, half of you will have something on this very day that has the potential to upset you. Just relax. Take it easy. Good evening. How are you? Good morning. 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 <laughs> um, Peanuts? Yeah. Yes, I think I'll have some peanuts. How much are the peanuts? Only 30 pesos per box. 20 pesos? Yeah. Let me get a... Only 3 pieces, 15. 3 pieces, okay. Okay, 3 pieces, 15. All righty, all righty. This Where is... from? I'm from U.S., Atlanta. US. Atlanta. Wow, beautiful country. It is a beautiful country. A lot of people don't think so, but it really is. All right, how much, what is that? That's a... That's 20. Oh, give me what 20 will buy. All righty.
sir, I'm walking. I'm out walking, yes, sir. I didn't see my car. Walking, walking. I'm going to keep walking. Okay. You have a blessed day. Okay, God bless you. you. All righty. I got some peanuts, baby. I'm getting ready to eat these peanuts. On the way back. Okay. All right. I don't know if I want those gourds or not. They look like squash. But I'm going to enjoy these peanuts. Life ain't what you got. It's what you appreciate. And I appreciate these peanuts right now. Anyway, that is the message for today. I'm getting ready to turn around. I'm getting ready to walk back. Just relax. Just relax. Just relax. Educate yourself. Serve. Serve. Understand others. And systematize. The name of Jesus has power on so many levels. And today, God just breathed those five things into my spirit in 30 seconds during my prayer. Just relax. Educate yourself, serve, understand others, systematize. Bow your heads and just lift close today with the word of prayer. I'm going to actually walk with my eyes closed while I'm praying. God will lead me and guide me. I hope I don't walk out in the middle of the street. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the people. I thank you for everyone who is present there today. And I pray that you bless them as they heed your message, that they just relax, educate themselves, serve, understand others, and develop a system. God, thank you for all that you have done, all that you have granted, all that you shall do. I thank you that you are our Father, and we are your children. In thy Son, Jesus' his name we pray. Amen. Amen. You might have walked out a little bit in the street, but God's got me. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't you pray with your eyes closed walking in the street. This is Pastor Nathaniel. I'll see you in another couple of weeks. Now I am headed back with my laundry. This is my laundry here, and it's all neat. It's really in this pack. It's about the size of a pillow. When I took it this morning, and it took them two hours to get it done. When I took it, it was wrapped in a sheet. It was huge. All over my back, I had it twisted in the sheet. Big old bundle of jumbled clothes. When I got it back, size of a pillow and it's just as heavy but it's way neater this is an example of when your life is systematized when it's organized and when it's neat just a whole lot neater easier to carry even though you've got to lift just as much a lot simpler a lot neater a lot easier systematized just go organized and it's going to be a whole lot easier for you to carry the burden now, I am out walking on the street, and I've got on my, uh, these are actually my water shoes. I carry them with me. I have them on because I've got all of my clothes at the laundromat. They're being washed, including all of my socks. So since I don't have on any socks, I wore these. But a lot of people are just fascinated by these shoes. I remember I was somewhere traveling, and I was going into the gym with them. And a lady asked me, well, were these the new Yeezys? I said, no, these are not Yeezys. I'm not into style at all. And if I was, I don't think I'd be wearing Yeezys. And I went into the laundromat today. And the lady running the laundromat was just fascinated over my shoes. It's amazing sometimes how the simplest things that you think nothing of, other people are just fascinated with. So... This is Coach Bronner walking along in Davao City, Philippines, in his not Yeezys. One of the things that takes some getting used to here in the Philippines is getting across the street. There are no traffic lights, and as you can see, it's kind of busy. So you just have to kind of walk out and hope they pull for stop for you, and you just go across the street. Just relax. Just relax. Get across that street. And just relax. Well, well.